G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today we're going to build a stunning professional website from start to finish. Having a website is one of the most important parts of presenting yourself online and building your business. And sometimes it can be tempting to take a shortcut like just running your website from a Facebook page or using a social platform that everyone else uses. But having a standout professional website is one of the most effective ways that you can build your business and carve your identity into the online real estate that you're competing against. Against. And today we're going to be doing that with Wix. This video is sponsored by Wix and we're going to be using their platform to build a stunning website in pretty much no time. It's like relative to the amount of time it has taken me in the past to create my websites manually. I will be able to show you how to build a fantastic website with no complications and a really straightforward approach and the result will be stunning and professional as you will see. So this is what the landing page of Wix looks like and you can just get started by simply signing up and picking the website type you want to create and then you take into a page where you can start off your website. You can create a blog, you can create a portfolio, you can create a business or commerce website where you sell digital products or real products and handles tax and shipping and all that stuff. Booking and events, music, even setting up live chats or hotel booking systems. It's incredibly robust, but we're going to start off today by just scratching the tip of the iceberg and creating a professional profile. And I'm going to build it for myself for Draw with Jazza. So you can actually check out the end result by going to drawwithjazza.com and seeing what we end up having made and also see how it performs for yourself. But this is going to be a really straightforward way for me to show you all the cool things that you can use when you build your website. So we're going to go ahead and select portfolio and CV and we're going to choose a template rather than using Wix ADI, which is sort of like an automatic website generator, which is the super easy way to go about it if you really want to have a simple process. But I like to fine tune things and really have control over the end result. So I'm going to go into the editor and select a template to start off with. So it brings up this pick the portfolio and CV template that you want and uh, it shows a whole bunch of different designs. And when you mouse over, it shows what they look like on mobile. There are several pages of results for each category and if you're not really loving the tone of the style it's presenting you could also go here to the left and select a different category if you want to check out the music templates, video, photography, so on and so forth. But this one here on the top right, this actor and model resume of John K. Holt, I really like that big splash screen as a landing page and the menus at the top is also something that I'm conscious of and, and I like the look of this one. So I'm just going to click edit and it'll open up the website editor with that template plate as the foundation. Now this is where I'm going to say we're going to stop and take a step back and think about and talk about a couple of things first because it, it can be really tempting to just jump into it and start playing which you can do but also from my perspective if you're looking for a really well executed result I recommend making just a little bit of time to step back create a mind map or brainstorm what your website's about. So what do I mean by that? Well to put it simply the internet is a very big place and one of the results of the fact that websites are so easy for anyone to build these days is that it can be hard to stand out. So if you want to make your website really capture people's attention and have them actually engage in the way you want them to, you're going to want to stop for a second before you build your website and think about what you want that result to be. Specifically, the home page, the landing page that nearly everyone is going to hit first, you want to address the things that matter most. In particular, in my instance, I want to say who I am, what the website's about and what I do, why they should pay attention and where they can go to contact contact me or get questions answered. So basically I'm going to treat the home page as a little bit of a sampler platter for each of those questions with sub pages for each one of those to answer them in depth. Now I've got a very simple page guide or a structure to my website, but what do I actually want people to do while they're there? What is the purpose of my website and what is the call to action? Now in reality, if someone visits your website, it's most likely going to be for a very short period of time people's attention spans aren't what they used to be. <laughs> so you're going to want to pin down what the exact call to action is. Meaning, do you want someone to buy a product or subscribe to your newsletter? Do you want to get freelance clients or do you want to fill tickets for an event? You need a call to action and you don't want too many, but whatever it is you want people to do, you need to make it enticing and clear. So the purpose of my website is to act as a portfolio and to provide information and answers to questions. The call to action for my website is for people to check out my social media and follow me and to contact me if they need to reach me. With the page structure outlined and the purpose and call to action roughed out, now I can move forward and build a website knowing what I'm going to focus on. So now we return to our regularly scheduled tutorial 
tutorial, I'm just going to give a really, really rough overview of the layout. And when I say really rough, I mean really rough because we're going to learn a lot of this stuff as I show you the features. In short, in the top left here, we have a pages navigator and uh, by default, they have set up a few different anchors and some other pages on the website. Anchors are these things here. You can see an about anchor, a show reel anchor. This basically allows you to link to specific sections of a single page. And this can be through a menu system or through a direct link. And this can be useful, especially if you have a very tall page with specifically segmented content. So this panel up here is going to be how you're going to navigate between your pages. Uh, up here, we have a few other options, basically your administration tools and your site tools. Also a few display tools for how you show your website. Also Wix has a huge amount of help resources. So if you have a specific question, you can go into the help section and just search for it. And in every instance I've had a question, it's been answered like that. So it's really useful. Here on the left, we have a whole bunch of different panels, which will allow you to create and alter elements of your website, especially in broader chunks. For example, you can tweak background settings, add one of many different elements or apps to your website. And then of course we have different things like apps, upgrades and blogging. Over here on the right, we have some general tools that you can use, which I haven't really used yet, to be honest, because I find the individual sort of clicking and dragging stuff most useful. But then in the top right here is something that you're going to use quite often. And I would recommend getting used to navigating around this. I'll show you quickly how this works. We're not going to publish yet. We'll do that later when we have a finished website, but you can click preview and it will snap your website into a preview mode and you can see what it looks like to other people. Beyond that, you can also click on mobile and switch it over into mobile view and uh, Hey, look at that. There's like a mini iPhone looking thing and you can scroll around and see what your phone looks like on a mobile view. That's really useful. And I recommend swapping between the browser view and editor and the mobile view and editor. Yes, there is a mobile editor. So when I go back to the editor, if I'm in the mobile viewer, it will by default go to the mobile editor and things display slightly differently, obviously, between the mobile and the desktop. So even while you're in the editor mode, you can swap between the uh, mobile and the desktop editor view. Use. And I recommend building the base of your website mostly for desktop and then going into mobile and making your tweaks so that it will present well on mobile. Other than that, that's pretty much it. So we're ready to get started and make a website. First things first, John Holt's got to go. So you'll notice if I click on anything, you get a little menu that appears right up next to where you click. So I can click on John Holt's face, click change strip background, and you can change the strip background to either a color image or a video. So I'm going to select image and it'll bring up this thingy. I have no images yet, so I'll click upload images and I'll select my giant face image. John Holt is about to get a makeover. Congratulations, John Holt. You are now Jazza. You're welcome. <laughs> Now, if you click on this settings button here, you'll notice that you can change the image opacity and you can change the color that is behind the image. So this can be useful if you want to soften your image. Also, you can change how it displays if you want it to parallax, reveal, zoom in, fade out, so on and so forth. So let's add a bit of parallax, but I also feel like the, uh, the image is a little too commanding. It takes up too much visual real estate. So I'm going to come down here and you'll see this stretch icon. You can just drag this up and I'm going to cover up a bit more of my face. There we go. And I just want to allude to the fact that I have more content sort of lower on the website. Now this template is laid out in things called strips. You'll notice as you scroll down, there are sort of these horizontal dividers between these areas of the website. It's a really useful way of thinking about it as blocks of content. You can subdivide those blocks of content and present them in really interesting or different ways. So obviously my name is not John. So by double clicking, I'll just change this to draw with bring the font down a little. I know it's not draw with halt. So we'll change this as well. <laughs> There we go. And let's reposition this so we get a bit more, I don't know, I guess width can be across the nose, that lovely chunky nose. And while I would like to consider myself an actor and model, at least one of those things is true, partially. Model, I'm definitely a model. I'm gonna change this to arty entertainment. I'm gonna save this, make sure to save as you go. And uh, oh, look at this, get a free Wix domain or connect with your customized domain. Well, it so happens that I own drawwithjazza.com. So I'm going to actually connect this with a customized domain. Now, just a quick clarification, to connect a custom domain, you do need a premium plan. Of course, the free version of Wix is 100% free forever and for everyone, but some of the more advanced features such as connecting to a custom domain can only be done with a premium account, which I have. So. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to connect this to drawwithjazz.com. I've changed the name servers on my domain provider. And just like that, there you go. 
My website's connected. Drawwithjazza.com. Too easy. So now that we're back on track, I'm going to hit preview and you'll see my website laid out and explorable as other people will see it. And you'll see that parallax effect at work here. You'll notice the image behind the title moves up slightly, but not at the same rate that the page moves. And this creates that really cool parallax effect, which is one of the features you can apply to background images in your web page strips. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of other content on the website that we can either remove or change or tweak. So let's go back to the editor and do that and I'm going to take a step back and first and foremost sort of build my website structure because the content is going to lead to other pages on the website and I want to make sure those pages are ready to go. So I'm just going to click up here and I'm actually just going to remove all of these pages. Uh, you'll notice if I click on them it has them all pre-set up which is sort of cool so I could use them as a template if I wanted to but I'm going to build my other pages from scratch. So I'll hit delete and I'm also going to delete the anchors because my home page is going to be quite simple and small so I don't actually need them to lead to different areas. So with all of those deleted, I just have a home page and now I'm going to add my other pages. So I have an about page. I'm going to add an art page. I'm going to add an FAQ page. And then last but not least, a contact page. Just like that, we have those pages set up as sort of blank canvases that I can come back to later. But the more important thing is that the actual placeholders for those pages now exist so that when I build up the rest of the homepage content, I can link to them. You'll notice also at the top here, the menu bar has changed based on those changes that I've added. You can hide them from the main menu if you want to by clicking here on your Explorer and with the three dots thing, you can click hide and it will hide the page from being visible in the menu, but it will still exist as a page. So you can still link to it. The other cool thing about this menu and I mean everything about this website builder is it's click and drag so you just move it if I wanted this menu to be on the left and the social buttons to be on the right I just simply click and drag and move them and just like that I've positioned them to where I want to same thing with the proportions and all of the different widths and heights of all of the elements the objects and images and text just click and drag it's as easy as that it's what we used to call in high school WYSIWYG which stands for what you see is what you get so now I'm going to go down and make changes that I want to for the rest of the website. Now, obviously this is quite a big homepage and I don't want all of this content on my homepage. So I'm going to select the things I want to get rid of, including the anchors. You just click on them and delete them. I like this section, so I'll keep that or at least change it. And uh, moving down this whole panel here, I'm not interested in, so I can just delete that and drag the one below up. There we go, just like that. Now I like this panel with these images. Well, not with these images, but I like the layout of that panel. I'm going to replace these images with images of my artwork. Uh, but otherwise, everything else in this page, in, such as the contact thing, I'll just have that on a separate page. I'll just keep it really simple. Drag the footer back up and keep the page nice and concise. So this is the structure of my homepage. Basically, three simple strips. Let's edit our middle strip. Obviously, I don't want to keep this face. So <laughs> I'm just going to right click and change image. Uh, you can also do this by just clicking on the image and the button is there, so I could have just done that. I'm going to upload an image of yours truly, but let's go with a nice cartoony image and just select choose image and there we have it. It's just replaced the image of that guy with my characters. Now it has been cropped automatically to fit the size of the previous image. So you can tweak this just by clicking the crop button. When you select the image, you'll see the icon there. You just press that and you can just drag these edges to just make sure the entirety of your image is visible or at least the portions you want to be visible. Then just simply resize and position how you want. Now, as you drag and drop or click and drag elements of your website around, you'll notice that the uh, boundaries or recommended parameters of your website, or at least on either side, are visible. Just so you know, sort of like bleed areas with prints, just where you probably shouldn't go over or at least put important content. So we have some filler text I'm going to replace with my welcome text. Just double click to edit and put that in there and I can change my font size. Now, this is something interesting I wanted to mention as well. Fonts are something that I guess people have different feelings or preferences on. And I have a favorite font that I want to use. But the problem is it's not in here. The great thing is you can actually import and upload your own fonts. So I'm going to do that just by clicking upload fonts. And I have in here Campton Book. Campton is my favorite font. I sort of use it for everything. I don't know if you've noticed. So it's just uploading and implementing that font. There we go. And just like that, I can select my font. You scroll up to the top, it's visible. And there we have it. I'm on brand, woohoo. Now I've implemented my font just for this block of text. However, this block of text has adopted a theme called paragraph two. Now changing the font just changes it for that block, but I can actually change the default font for anything that is using paragraph two 
in the future or elsewhere on the website. And to do that, I can just click save theme based on the changes that I've made. And just like that paragraph two by default implements my favorite font. Now this button, as you'll see, says see resume. That's not what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna change the text to say FAQ. Enter, there you go. So I've replaced the text. I can click here to add a link and it will link to a whole bunch of different things if I choose to an anchor, a web address, an email, so on and so forth. I'm gonna just select here and select the FAQ page, hit done. And just like that, this button is a link to my FAQ page, which is why I set up those pages earlier. Now this background color is a bit garish for my taste. So I'm just gonna click here, change strip background and select image. And I'm gonna go into my images and upload a new background background splashback. Literally. You get it? Because because they're splashes of paint. But it's a bit much. So I'm going to soften the effect of this splashback by clicking settings. And this is where I could change effects if I wanted to. But I'm going to change the background color to be sort of a hue of blue like that. And I'll bring down the opacity. And there you can see it sort of soften. I still get that splashy effect and the cool colors, but it's not as obnoxious as it was. And as much as I love obnoxiousness, it's not always necessary. <laughs> So I'm liking this panel so far, but I want to bring the website to life a bit. The parallax will help with that, but I also feel like I can have a bit of fun with this image. I want it to sort of slide up or, or pop up as people scroll down the website. So I can actually apply an animation and this is super easy to do. You'll notice if you click on the image in this panel of options up here, there is one that says animate. Click on this and you can choose from a whole bunch of different options. I'm going to have this one slide in, but by selecting that, I can also customize and change the direction from below, from the bottom, and it'll look like it's popping up from the strip beneath it, which looks really cool. That's a bit rapid for me, so I'm going to slow it down by extending the duration and adding a slight delay, maybe, a, I don't know, a couple of seconds. So I've applied my animation. I can just save and preview my website and see how this looks. Scrolling down, look at this. Uh, okay, so that takes a, a little bit too long to come up. So I'm gonna go back to the editor, make my changes, save, preview, and just like that, there you go, that's much better. So I really like that popping up as I scroll down. You can apply animations to anything, to the text, to the buttons, but I recommend, as with all of the features we're gonna go through, using them wisely and not going crazy, because Let's face it, there are a huge amount of things you can do with parallaxes, animations, and apps in Wix, but sometimes less is more, and using them effectively is more important than using them a lot. So now that I'm happy with this strip, I'm gonna move around and edit this one, and you sort of get the idea at this point that making your changes is really straightforward. It's the same sort of process. You click, you can change, there are a whole bunch of options here, so I can just change my images. By default, it has these selected, so I'm just gonna remove these images from the gallery and add my own, just upload all of these at once and there we go they're all uploaded hit done and then I can also just select the first one and hold shift and click the last one and add all of them to the gallery at once but I shouldn't have done that because I don't want all of them in there so I'm just going to delete the ones I want to get rid of and just have a selection because I want the home page to be a sampler so the previous gallery had six images I'm going to do the same and select six that I want on the home page six that are nice and colorful and have a bit of variety done just like that how cool is that there we go we have our gallery at the bottom there and if you don't like the order of these images you just go back into change images and you can just click and drag and move that around which is really cool too the other thing to keep in mind is that these are galleries so they will link to something and have an overlay so i'm just going to select these and have each of the images link to a page on the website specifically the art page that way if people like the artwork and they click on it it will take them to a page where they can see everything in a gallery now this gallery section also has a few settings i need to tweak so i'm going to click on it and select settings and move this bar over here at the moment it says when clicked they open up in a pop-up specifically the images I'm going to say a link opens and as you saw I added the links in the image editor so that should be good to go let's save and preview and now when I click on the images I go to an empty page which will become my art page so let's go back to our home page other than that I can just double click the text in the editor to make my changes to the footer so copyright Jazza Studios proudly created with wix.com and then the height of the website overall should be tweaked a little bit so i'll just drag the footer back up so it's anchored against the strip at the bottom of the page before we move on to the other pages the last thing we needed to do on the home page is optimize it for mobile and this is really simple you just click here and change to edit mobile view and this here is important to note changes made here won't affect 
your desktop site. So you can move things around and the desktop site will stay the way you set it up, which is really cool. And as you can see in the mobile view, it shows how it lays out. It's almost good, but it, it's a little off and it's really easy to just make work. I'm gonna align all the text to the center like this. And I'll bring all of this down so that we have draw with Jazza just below the eyes and in front of the face. Ooh, how, how daring. I can actually resize the strip for the mobile page, which is kind of cool. Just reposition this, there we go. And bring up the strip underneath. And I'm just making general tweaks. So changing the cropping to show my entire image. And I'm also gonna move this under the text because I want the text to show first change the strip height i've also got my faq button and then my image i'll enlarge my image a little bit so it has a little bit more pizzazz there we go i think that's looking pretty cool and then last but not least we need to just position the gallery there we go tweaked my footer and just like that we have a mobile site i can save and preview and we can see how it looks on a mobile device and i'm really happy with that i think that looks cool back to the editor it's time to go back into our desktop mode and work on the other web pages so i'm going to navigate over to the about page and i want to make a really cool first impression so i'm going to add a bit of a video background to do this i'm going to hit add and go to strip and you can scroll down to a classic strip and you'll see in brackets it says video. You can work with any strip as a foundation to get what you want, but I find it's easiest to work with something that is what you want, what you're working on to be, if that makes sense. I can click change strip background, select video, and I'm going to upload a video to be in my strip. The video has to be under 50 megs, which is pretty reasonable for a website video, but also Wix processes it so that it plays quicker and without any issues when people load your web page. So hit done, you'll see it's transcoding there. So it's got more playability on web browsers and that's transcoding now. But even while it's transcoding, I can just click change background and it will apply that and still work in the background to do that transcoding. So I'm gonna stretch this to a place where the home panel has my face somewhat centered. Now it's cropping the top and bottom of the video because it's stretching to the width of the full length of the page. You can change that if you want, but I like it like that because it's gonna have a big wow factor because this video has a whole bunch of arty stuff that's going to play through and it doesn't really matter that it's cropping so that's okay it's just there to serve to add punch to this page and actually on top of the video i want to add some text so i can just click a uh, drag and drop page title on top of my face here double click and i'll just say i'm jazza from draw with jazza bring the font size down stretch it to the size that i want and center I'll just center this on the image here you can see those guidelines that appear as you move things around so the video behind the text is going to change but the text isn't that being said there are places in the video where the video is white and the text is white so i'm just going to help make the text more readable by clicking on it hitting edit text and i can scroll down to effects and just add a little bit of a shadow like that it's nothing too over the top but it means in the sections where it's very bright or white it will still be more readable now let's move on to the content of the page you'll notice there's this background color here i can just double click on that and uh, just change it to a white to be uniform with the rest of the website and i'm going to add a new new strip which will just be a blank classic white strip and I'm going to put this under the other strip and it's really useful to just work in strips to just stack them for chunks of content because the next chunk of content is going to be the about section so the actual body of the content is going to fit inside this strip here. So I'm gonna add text and I'm gonna add a uh, large heading. We can drag this here. Now I've actually added another custom font, which is a, a bold Campton font that I'm gonna apply, select a font size, and I'm gonna just save this as the large heading theme because I'm gonna keep that cohesion across my pages. So I've saved that. I'm gonna drag this across here and anchor it sort of to the left. And there we go. We have a, a title about draw with Jazza. Let's add some text. Click and drag. So there you go, I've filled in a paragraph of text and uh, I'm gonna have a few little subsections. So I can just shift select both, copy and paste, drag the pasted thing down here and just uh, make my text alterations. And then I'll expand this out a bit. And then underneath these two, I'm gonna add a bit of a link to my FAQ page. So if people have more questions, it just leads them there. So here we go, any more questions? And uh, I'm just gonna add a little bit more interest. I, I feel like it's a bit empty at the moment. I do have that video up at the top. I have a chunk of text at the bottom. I wanna add a little more visual interest to this page. So what can I do? I'm gonna stretch this down. I'm gonna create a little bit of space between the top section and this bottom section. So 
so I'll add a little bit of a gap there. And I'm gonna chuck in my YouTube channel trailer. This is super easy, click add, go to video, click and drag YouTube onto the stage and resize it to however you want it to fit in the frame. There you go, center that and hit settings. Replace the video link with your own, and just like that, I have my video channel trailer under About Draw with Jazza. So if they want to learn even more, they can just click play and my video will tell them. Beyond that, I do have at the bottom, uh, sort of referring to my FAQ page, to add a link, you can just click and drag over a section of text and press this link button in the text settings, and this is going to link to the FAQ page, done. But I'm gonna make it even clearer than that and add a button. So you can just go here to button, click and drag. This is a contact us button, but that's okay, because I can double click and change that to FAQ, bam, just like that. And this will link to the FAQ page, bam, just like that. Look at that, how quick and easy was that? Now, I do of course need to make my tweaks for the mobile version, so I'll switch over there. Now something to keep in mind with video backgrounds is it doesn't currently work with mobile, so there will be the freeze frame on the first frame of the video, which I think works quite well for this video because of the way it sort of shows me in the first frame. So I'm just, just gonna drag this under my face and this will be what people see when they see this page, which. I think it works really well. I'm gonna just bring the text down in size just a touch so it fits within the darker area of my uh, my shirt. Also keep in mind for the mobile view, just like the, the desktop view, you can move the position of the menu and the uh, social icons and stuff. So down here, about draw with Jazza, that's all laid out perfectly fine. So I'm happy with that, let's preview it. So it looks good for mobile, woohoo, cool. And then desktop, bam. Oh, and there's the video. How cool is that? So someone's gonna go to the about page and it will show quite clearly who I am and what I do. And this is one of those things that can help capture people's interest when they visit your website. It doesn't have to be a video with audio, but having this as a visual element to help punctuate and communicate what I'm trying to say to people is really cool and, and really visually appealing as well as interesting. So there we go, that's that page done. Back to the editor, let's move on to our uh, our gallery. First things first, because we can work in these really appealing strips, I'm just gonna start off with one that just, again, serves to punctuate what this page is communicating. I'm just gonna add an image strip like this, anchor to the top. I'm gonna change the image to one that I'm gonna upload of me drawing a picture because it's about my art. Done, change background, I'll crop it to how I like it. Uh, but I also wanna just go into the settings and just change the position to be anchored from the bottom. And I'm not gonna have have an effect. I'm not going to have an, a parallax or anything. I just want it to focus on the hand drawing a picture like this. And I'll just crop it to just sit against that black line, which I think adds as a nice addition to the framing. Add a page title, Art Gallery. I'm going to click and drag this. And the cool thing is it appears really nicely on top of this white paper. And again, serves to communicate what this page is, which I think is really cool. Now, this is the sort of thing that gets me really excited because when I first made my original websites, making galleries, especially image galleries, was such a nightmare. Like to set up individual pages and links to each of those pages and then to update it was a huge pain in the butt. Whereas here, you can just click add, go to the gallery sections, third from the top, and you can add a full width gallery, but I'm going to add a, uh, a grid gallery, which is just going to be the width of the boundaries of the page. Now I can just select manage media, get rid of all the defaults that they have here and add my own images, apply and done. And then <laughs> there you go. That's it. That's how... Seriously, if if 17 year old me saw this happen like this, he would just be tearing his hair out with, with the <laughs> resources he had to work with. This is incredible. And and honestly, that's it. That's, that's my, my gallery page done. I can hit save, I can preview it, and I've got my art gallery. Now, there are a few things that I will tweak as well because there are share settings and like settings, which I actually don't want in there. And that's as simple as clicking here, settings, and just turning off social sharing. Because this for me is just more about showing what I do rather than trying to proselytize my work any further to other platforms. And as you imagine, there's a whole bunch of different things you can play with as well, like the layout and the way all of this stuff interacts or the ratio of all the icons, the options are endless. It's, it's pretty crazy. That's my gallery for now. I'm pretty 
pretty happy with that. I guess the last thing to do before I move on to the next page is just have a look at the mobile page. But the art gallery title isn't very visible. I'm actually gonna just change the color. And uh, like I mentioned before, that's only gonna change the color of this title for the mobile version of the website, which is really cool. So that says art gallery. I've moved it to the center like that. I quite like that as a landing page image. And then they just scroll down and see the gallery like that. I'll just add a bit more of a gap and that's really cool. Done, save, preview. Oh my God. <laughs> you can click on the image there. You can see it loads just like that. Each of the images when you click on them. And of course, this is just your normal website navigation. So I can go back to my about page and my homepage. My God, we are smashing this thing out. Let's move on now to the desktop view and make our FAQ page. And we do have this theme happening of a nice top image that helps demonstrate the purpose of each page. So I'm going to keep that trend happening. I'm going to add an image strip and uh, replace the image. So I like this image I have of my camera in my studio filming me with my studio blurred out behind it. It's got a really nice depth of field uh, and I think sort of captures the idea of the FAQ page. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to add a title, page title, drag that across, FAQ. Move that to the middle there. So now I'm going to add the content of my FAQ. Let's add a little bit of text to introduce what the FAQ page is about. I'm going to add my large heading, say frequently asked questions. So I'm just going to add some text to describe what this page is about. And there we go. We have my intro to the FAQ page. Here's where things get fun again. I'm gonna go over here to add and at the bottom you'll see more. I'm gonna scroll all the way down in more and you'll see Wix FAQ. Oh my goodness. This is just way too easy. Now I'm really excited about this because I don't have an FAQ page or at least one with really nice functionality and I get a lot of questions. To be honest, if I have a call to action or a purpose for this website, it's the FAQ page. I need a place to send people to have questions answered because I get asked a lot of questions by a lot of people. So this is a great way for me to uh, serve that function and I can just make my alterations just by double clicking here. You'll see Wix FAQ, you can click manage questions and you just simply type the question, click edit, and you type in your question and put in your answer, and you can just add a whole bunch. I'm going to insert a few of the FAQ apps because I actually want to have a few different titles and sections, specifically uh, a section for like general questions, a section for support, a section for advice, uh, and that way they'll be a really easy to navigate and visually well presented FAQ page. So I'm not going to bore you with all of that. I'll do the first one. What do we got here? Let's go with, can I hire you for freelance work? My answer is unfortunately due to my current schedule, I don't do freelance work, but that's a common question I get. So click tick, there you go, question added. So I'm gonna go through and do that for a whole bunch of these, add my different FAQ sections. And uh, thanks to the power of editing, I'll take you there now. <laughs> my FAQ section finished. There's quite a lot of content and answers in there, so I did skip a chunk of time to get that done. But the point is, this is really compact. There's there's actually quite a lot of text in here, but hidden behind these little drop-down menus, which you can preview by clicking that. And all of a sudden, if I click this, you'll see the answers just appear based on what you click. You can open several if you want to read through those. This one at the top has basic Q&A for interviews that people often ask for, so that's, you know, fairly in depth. I'm gonna make a few extra tweaks. Uh, at the moment, there are social sharing buttons. So I'm just gonna go in here and turn those off. So I'll turn off the search bar, turn off the social sharing, and I'll just do that individually for each of these. So I've saved that. And then I do need to make a few tiny tweaks. The mobile view, which you'll see when I scroll up, FAQ is at the top. I'm just gonna drag this down to just sort of be there. Quite like that. Otherwise, I think everything else displays really well. There you go, save, preview, and this all looks really good. You'll notice it pushes all the other things on the same strip down so that you never run out of room or it doesn't crop it off. Mobile looks good. Let's check out desktop. There we go. Hey, there we go. Okay, cool. I've got an FAQ page. I've never actually had a functioning FAQ page, but now I do. And that only took me like 20 minutes. Now, before we wrap up in this page, I just want to add a little touch of visual interest. We've got the visual interest at the top, but then we have a wall of text. So what I'm going to do to brighten it up a bit is add an image. I'm just going to select my image uploads and uh, I'm going to upload this little image of my avatar sitting back on a chair having a chat. Add to page. This is what the image looks like. It's a PNG. I'm just going to scale this and I want this image to sit in the bottom right. 
of the page, but I actually want it to be anchored to the bottom right of the page and always be present. So to do this, I'm gonna scale it to the size I want and I can just right click and select into screen and I'm gonna click on the bottom right corner and I can change the offset to, uh, there we go, pin it to somewhere around there. On the vertical offset, I'm gonna change it to zero so that it actually rests on the bottom of the page. With that done, the last thing I wanna do is actually crop this image and I'm just gonna crop it just so that his feet are covered slightly, just so he looks like he's sort of behind the, the browsing bar. And just like that, we have our little character who, as I scroll down the page, is constantly visible. And I think this is really fun. I'm gonna preview this. There you go, this is what it looks like in the actual browser so I can check out the answers to my questions. And it just looks like my little cartoon character is there answering the questions the whole time. And it just adds that touch of personalization to the website. I love that, I'm super happy with that. So let's move on to the last page, the contact page, which is another place where I can show you how easy something that was previously difficult can become. So just like you saw with the gallery and the FAQ, you can just click plus and go to, where is it? Contact. And there's a whole bunch of different contact forms and visual representations and other options as well, including maps. It, it's, it goes pretty deep, but I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple. Click and drag this form in here, double click, and you'll also see that I can add areas such as phone and address if you want. I'm just gonna keep it like this. I think that's fine. But at the moment it looks kind of visually confusing because the text areas are white uh, and the page is white. I want the text areas to be visible and feel clickable. So if I just click on design, this little brush, when I have that selected, I can click customize design and under fill and opacity, I can change the field background to, uh, let's add a color. Let's go like a really light blue, just something really unintrusive. I can also go into the text and uh, let's bring up the font size because it looks a little unreadable at the moment. There we go. Darken the color just a touch and let's go bold and I'm pretty happy with that. I'll just uh, tweak the size a smidge and then center it on the page. Now let's add a page title. Brilliant, there we go, we have a contact page. Uh, now I'm just gonna add a few elements to both personalize and inform the page. So to personalize it, let's do the same thing that we did for the last page. Let's add something anchored to the corner of our image. We'll do it on the opposite side and I'll do this one of the Jazza avatar writing a note in the corner of the page. Scale it to the size I want and right click and pin to screen. Bottom left, no vertical buffer, but let's bring it in to the right a little bit. There we go. So our contact page has a little character on the corner here. I might make him a bit smaller. Now, the other thing I want to do is just add a little bit of a disclaimer to this page, basically to sort of say, I get a lot of people contacting me. So please read the FAQ to have your questions answered if it's there. Otherwise, just be aware that it may take some time to reply or we may not get to you. So it feels awful to say that, but unfortunately I sort of have to say that so people don't have expectations if I'm unable to get to everyone. So to do this, I'm actually going to use something called a light box, which is sort of like a full page pop-up that can either say welcome to my website or subscribe to my newsletter or anything like that. And I'm going to add one to this page so that anyone who goes to the contact page is immediately informed as to how we receive and deal with email. So I'm going to click add and I'm going to go down to Lightbox, and I'm just going to click and drag this generic welcome to my site one and let's uh, customize it. So we have my little disclaimer here. I'll just change enter site to be okay. Got it. And I can change the visuals of this by clicking into this outside area here. I can set up overlay. I don't want it to be dark because the aesthetic of my website currently isn't dark. So I can change the overlay background, click settings, and you can see that there's opacity and color. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. I'm gonna make this white. Now, obviously the text is invisible, so I'm gonna have to change the text color. There we go. And uh, I feel like that's pretty good as a bit of a disclaimer. Now, if you click on this, you can see in the settings tab, you can change a few things about how this pops up. I actually want this to pop up a little quicker than two seconds. I want it to come up after one second and it's only on the contact page. You can have it pop up on specific pages or with specific functions. I'm pretty happy with all of that. So let's just save that. And uh, just for future reference, you click here to exit from the top left, but you can also go back into it by going back up to this navigator and you'll find a new tab 
tab called light boxes. So you have your pages and then your light boxes. You can just click on that and edit that pop-up. So let's view this in context and I visit the page. There's my pop-up. That's really cool. And uh, you can tweak it or change it to be whatever you want it to be. But the purpose of these light boxes is to inform someone or bring people's attention to something and in a visually appealing way, which I think that uh, works quite well. Otherwise the contact page is really simple and straightforward, which I like. So I'm happy with that. So that's actually everything I wanted to cover for my website, but there are some things I just want to touch on that uh, are pretty cool features that I think you also might find useful for your website and different things you can add or tweaks you can make that are great features of Wix. And I want to start off by showing you something called a slideshow. You will have seen this on websites before. If you just go to interactive, you'll notice that there are a bunch of different options here. Up the top, you can see full width slideshows. In the middle, box slideshows, which are the same sort of thing. And then at the bottom, we have hover boxes. Uh, how this works, I'll just drag a full width one in here. It's pretty straightforward. Obviously, you can change the height and the content of the slideshow, but you get panels that you can manage and you can go between them by clicking this button here. And as you can see, you can automate a different image or a different wall of text or just different content on your website without it taking too much vertical real estate, which is really nice. Now, the difference between the full width and the box slideshows is pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, a box slideshow just doesn't take up the full width of the page, but both are pretty useful. Another thing to keep in mind when you're working on your content is that you can divide your strips into columns. How this works is, let's say I add a blank strip, just a white one here, click and drag it. It takes up the full width. You know how it works. At the moment, this is just one big column. But if I click here on the layout button, you'll see a bunch of options. I can align everything to the left or the right. I can also add a column. And you can do this multiple times. You can add multiple columns, but you can see it divides the uh, layout within that column. And you can change the proportions of your columns, the spacing of your columns. But this is really useful to segment the areas of content, particularly if you have a blog or perhaps some sort of dot pointed or instructional content. It just really helps you space apart and display your content in a way that's visually appealing and also going to scale and position well on multiple browsers and on phones. The content within the columns within the strips works as I've shown you through this whole video. And the last thing I want to show you is something called a hover box, which I think is really cool. So if I go in here and find interactive at the bottom, you can see hover boxes. Let's just drag this one here. There we go. I've got my little hover box. I'll resize it. How does a hover box work? Well, just like with the slideshows, when you click on them and you can move between the different slides and edit them, on the hover box, you have a separate tab for the hover function. So there's the regular, which is what it looks like normally, and the hover, when you select it and edit it, is what appears when you mouse over that section or the hover box. So if I preview this page, you'll notice when I mouse over this, the quote appears in the lady transitions. Let's change this image. Let's uh, personalize it. To my face. Much better. Look at that. Say, Jazza, what makes an artist? And in the hover, we can have it, quote, obnoxious consistency. As with anything, if you hit this design paintbrush, you can change all your colors. Let's do that a bit. And you can change all of the settings within the box itself. Let's save, preview, and then we have the hover box in action. Look at that, gorgeous. Mouse over and then we get those quotes. And that can be useful for articles and stuff as well. Just to finalize that point about the uh, the columns, I'll just add a chunk of text here. There we go, add, add a bunch of text in there and there it is in context. You can see you can divide things by columns and it will be adaptive to your browser. The very last thing I wanna show you is something I think is worth keeping in mind is really cool. If you click on any image, you can click on this magical little filters wand here and you get a whole bunch of different options. So if you find there's something that you want to create in an effect in a background image or perhaps like staff profiles where you want to create a uniform look between their profile pictures that's a really great way to do that and uh, that's what that looks like in context that being said this temp page was just to show off a few of those cool features so I'm just gonna delete this now because my website is officially finished just like that I have a website and look at this it's like 
polished and professional. I have all these different pages that I can go to about with my video playing in the background and sort of helping show who I am. Clicking on the art page shows my gallery, which was just stupid easy to set up. And then we have the FAQ page. I added a little animation for my character to sort of pop up at the bottom there, just so he doesn't randomly appear on top of stuff. This is all really functional and really, really easy to set up. And then we have a contact form with a little bit of a pop-up and disclaimer, which I can just get rid of. And on top of that, everything has been completely set up and optimized for mobile. Look at this, the entire home page. I can just switch over in the menu to the about page. That all looks great. Art, there you go, you've got your gallery. I can check out all of the images as I please. The FAQ page, which is just as appealing and functional, just like that. And then of course the contact page and all that functionality is there, including that disclaimer note pop-up in the mobile version. It's absolutely incredible and really powerful and easy to use. The result is something I'm really satisfied with and has a really professional look and only took me about an hour. That is crazy. That's absolutely insane. I worked off of this as a foundation, by the way, which of course the homepage has, has similarities because I did use it because I liked the aesthetic, but the actual structure is entirely different. This web page is entirely one page, whereas mine has been customized and tweaked with multiple pages, contact forms, and all of those social buttons that lead to all of my social profiles, like my YouTube channel, there you go. So I'm really happy with the result. It was a pleasure to put together and something I'm really proud to share with you guys. Go check it out, go to drawwithjazza.com and check out the FAQ if you have some questions you wanna ask. And of course, if you wanna make a website for yourself, you can get started right now and it doesn't cost you a penny. There's so much I haven't gone into in this video. I mean, just look at all these things I haven't looked at by clicking the add button. We have stores, blogs, variety of different options for visuals, music, social, and then on top of that, if you click more, you can see all of these different options here. Implementation of documents, search, events, statistics, analytics. It's just, it's insanely powerful. But beyond that, it's usable power. You don't have to be a coder to make an incredible website. So I highly recommend Wix. I really enjoy using it. It gives you total creative freedom over how you present yourself, how you bring people to that call to action and fulfill the purpose of your website. And on top of that, if you're a nut for control and you really like to control things under the hood, they also have just released a new feature called Wix Code. So the coders out there can also use their skills to make their websites better than ever. With Wix Code, you can build your own web applications and robust websites. You can set up database collections custom forms and change the site's behavior to your wants and needs. But all that said, that brings us to the end of today's video and the creation of this website. I love how it turned out. And once again, I can definitely recommend Wix. So a huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description to go check them out. It's also in the card. And I hope this video was really helpful for you and uh, gave you a few things you can keep in mind when building your own website. I wanna thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast making it. Once again, check out that website in the description. Subscribe to draw with Jazza for more fun with art three times a week. That's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos. And while you're at it, check out my shop where I sell eBooks, brushes, photo references, video courses, and more. There's another video you might enjoy from my channel over there. And you can also check out my behind the scenes daily vlog channel, Daily Jazza. That's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later.